Welcome to episode 109. I'm not clicking any buttons because everything you touched today failed. But uh, we back. Okay, so uh, I'm the got viewers too, so now it's all all good. Everything should be fine. Um, yes. Hey, anyway, episode 09. We are gonna talk to Jerome here about Nino client in a in a few minutes. But we actually have news this time that's worth talking about. Um, and we have Holly too. I need to remember to remember to say all of you. Uh, it's all there. But we'll get back to Holly too. <laughs> <laughs> a few seconds. So anyway, um, we'll talk about Minio in a few minutes. But uh, the big news is that um, uh, last week I published, or oh, we published a blog uh, about starting Quarkus three. Um, we actually posted on Quarkus Dev two or three weeks ago that this was happening. Uh, not that it was any secret or anything, but um, we want to do. A, we've done Quarkus two. Has been on since. A year plus. Um, we, if we could, we would stay on Quarkus Two for now. But um, there's a bunch of stuff that's kind of piling up. Uh, to hey, you know, something should should uh, happen. And um, as always, we try and move forward and and pick up new new and improved things, uh, and not be stuck uh, on something for, you know. For what do you call that? Nostalgia, 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 <laughs> nostalgia. nostalgia. Um, so yeah, so um, there's a big uh, things coming in uh, in this quarter three. The plan is to come out in uh, Q1, uh, February, March uh, time frame. Um, and uh, the big ones is uh, Hibernate or M6. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, if you've been on the court on uh, this uh, past a few times. You heard here talk about Hibernate was the kind of library we use to has as a litmus test that if the approach Quarkus it worked. So when we actually did this, uh, our Quarkus uh, zero, one, and two has actually been running on a custom in quote version of Hibernate because there was stuff we had to adjust. Uh, and then that actually is in Hibernate OM6, they picked up a lot of those uh, uh, changes and improvements. Plus, of course, Hybrid 6 has gotten, kind of gotten a lot of uh, new features and, and also cleanup. Um, and this includes uh, things like uh, not having a Corteria uh, API anymore, but using JPA uh, Corteria API, and a bunch of other stuff uh, that means that it's not a drop-in replacement, but it's a replacement for the better. So most things will work for users, but there are stuff that will, will change. So it's not something we want to do um, and indicating, oh, this is fine. You can just, this is just a minor update. It, it is, it's, it's fairly big. Um, but then also comes in Decada EE 10. Um, so uh, we are on Decada 8 now. Uh, so 9 didn't have changes. It was just the packaging rename. But 10, there are some improvements. Um, but the big one here is, of course, the package names has, has uh, you know, chain from, from Java X to Jakarta E uh, equivalents. And this, of course, require, has a fairly big impact uh, on user code because you have to change, you have to, you have to change the source code to upgrade. Um, and then there's like picking up microprofile 6 because of Jakarta E10. There's, uh, there's one more here, concurrent flow, also packet renames um, that are just kind of making it, hey, we need, it, it needs to be a bigger release. So, and then, there's IO Euring, there's more work on IO threads, there are the gRPC server, the VRAM dev UI. Um, and each of these are uh, good and relevant on their own, but when you combine them, we kind of took the opportunity to say, hey, let's do that, and we call it Core 3. Um, and there might be more coming in, but these are the ones we identified so far. Um, but yeah, so we, we will do more, uh, probably in, in the time frame of uh, January, we'll probably get someone on the on the different topics here and and, uh, and and cover them on insights to kind of give you an idea of what's coming. And uh, what else is here? Yeah, we, you actually, if you want to try it out, you can today. If you go on Core Quarkers, uh, let me just open this one. I hope you guys can see it. There you go. You will actually see that we added uh, yeah, the two fourteen still recommended one, two thirteen, two seven. Uh, there's now a 3.0 called Alpha 1. 
um, which is to indicate that not everything is, is all stable and good. Um, but the idea is that now you can try it out. Uh, and even better, you can, there's an upgrade script. They use a technology called Open Rewrite to send this out. And Antonio says, do you already have a, has a roadmap <laughs> um, for uh, Corpus 4? Uh, no, we don't. We don't, uh, we don't believe in planning ahead that far. Um, but uh, yeah. We didn't have our community to wind us up and, and troll us. What would be the point of community? Yeah, that's how it is. Um, so no. Oh, and actually, yeah, so uh, Holly just sent me a link that's interesting to mention is um, we are uh, writing a weekend tree uh, in a core course on how to migrate extensions over. Um, because for the user, there shouldn't be much besides that script we have. Um, but we're kind of collecting the data, uh, you know, notes and stuff for this. And uh, if you're interested, you know, you can take a look. And um, yeah. So anyway, that's the, the Quarkus um, uh, 3 update. I think they covered everything that will be in here. Uh, worth noting, we will still do Quarkus 2 Xs uh, until the 3.0 is in a state where we either, this is good enough to go or uh, or we have to just for you know practical reasons. Uh, well, that sounded wrong. It will only go out if it's good enough to go. <laughs> but it might be that when we declare that it's good enough to go, not everything in the platform might be three already. Um, because of just you know practical reasons, like uh, uh, Camel and Cogito have fairly big dependency change that might not be ready before like Corpus three is out and 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 together with like uh, other frameworks releasing with Dakota that kind of just have to all align. Um, so this is this is this is a bit different than the other Corpus major releases, but we hope it'll be for the better. Uh, to go forward. So yeah. Hey, anyway, Holly, did I forget anything? No, I think that that's exactly it. So for some extensions, it will just be search and replace, and for other extensions, that probably is going to need a bit more thinking because, as you say, there's the sort of the the dependency Tetris to be like, oh well, this one has changed and this one hasn't has changed, and how do we make it all line up? Yeah, and that's yeah. that's the thing that. Yeah, it, there's no easy way to fix this. Like we could wait until everyone moved, but then we will wait until everyone is waiting for us to move. So it's kind of a bit of a catch-22. Cool. So anyway, let's get back to the main program. Um, and I'll remove uh, the Quarkus 4 up there here. Um, so, uh, Jerome, uh, you're new, new, new on here. Uh, do you want to give you a quick interruption and then we can get on to the main main event? Yeah, yeah of course. So uh, I'm Jerome. Uh, I work for uh, One Point. Um, I'm like tech lead architect, depending on the project I work for. And I've been working with Java for a long time, as you can see with my white hair. <laughs> Um, and I was very happy to see uh, Quarkus uh, come in when it did, because we had like a huge effort to make uh, in the Java community for memory consumptions and all that stuff. And yeah. we had only the choice between like Java EE and Spring. And well, everyone was using Spring, including me. And so, yeah, I was happy when I see it, uh, when I saw it uh, arrive, and now I'm happy using it. So you, 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 uh, you can't see your shirt, but you have a Quarkus 2. Do you have the yeah. Quarkus 1? Is that the Quarkus 2 or the Quarkus 1? No, that's two. 2. Yeah. Okay. Did, did you no, get the I, Quarkus 1? No, I was not that an early adopter. <laughs> oh, okay. I waited for it to be a, a bit stable. <laughs> <laughs> Collector's item, the one ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And try, we're trying to get the Caucus Three T-shirt to happen too, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, one point. Uh, it's a company does well. 
what well, do you I, do we, that you got, uh... we, uh, uh, what that's called consulting some kind of thing we're developing <laughs> stuff for people who doesn't have any <laughs> any 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 developers in their company helping or sometimes sometimes uh, we'll, we we try to intervene at an, a higher level to um, to help them on like it can be on their architectures on their um, uh, multiple years planning before strategic and that kind of stuff okay. uh, but also we're uh, now like it's kind of a new thing we're trying to become an editor and so uh, we we've had some uh, inner projects uh, on which I work and we choose quarters and that was one of those projects to lead to uh, the born of uh, the Minaya extension. Very cool. Okay. So what's what's Minaya? So yeah, Minaya is like some kind of drop-in replacement for um, uh, Amazon S3 buckets, uh, which is Kubernetes native. So you you can deploy it on your uh, Kubernetes cluster and that's it. You have buckets. So this means you can host your own storage on your own cluster. Yeah, the and then you can bug them with uh, any uh, 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 PVC you want, any kind of FS or even an MT. I don't know. Okay. But why? Why would so? Uh, why would you, you you use that over just use Amazon yes. or any other? Yes. Uh, well, that's really simple. Uh, the the uh, cloud provider we worked with didn't have any buckets to offer to us, and we wanted object buckets. storage. <laughs> yes, and okay. so that one okay. is simple. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, nice. So, all okay. right. Well, so what do you? Uh, why did you need to have a corpus thing for it? Do you, does it? For native or for dev experience or both yeah. or so it was like a, a step by step um, um, walk. At first, uh, like the project was a modular project, and so we deployed I think five or six uh, Quarkus uh, applications in the same cluster, and a few of them needed to uh, talk with the buckets, and so at first for one module. We did the work to provide a MNAO client to produce a bin. And when you did, uh, we, we tried to go native. Uh, it's not the case anymore. But so I, I needed to do the work uh, for the Quarkus client to be able to work uh, in a native mode uh, because I have lots of serialization. Got it. So, so you, you said that you needed it, but now you don't need it anymore? Uh, well, no, no. In, in fact, we don't use a uh, native anymore because, uh, like, we 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 went away from uh, serverless. We we thought we would do serverless, uh, but we don't anymore. And so there's no point in doing native if we have just long running applications. Um, Hotspot yeah. is doing really great work. So yeah, and, and you don't need the sub second yeah. startup. You're fine with a, a few exactly. Things. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so oh. I think oh. one day I, I I think I opened a, uh, a pull request at Quarkus. I didn't know Quarkiverse existed at the time and said, hey, I have something that might be interesting for uh, for Quarkus. Um, and like we chose Quarkus because it was open source and all the tools we used uh, for uh, this uh, particular project were, were yeah. open source and so we said now now it's our turn to give back uh, and since we have something that's that could be useful to others well why not open source it and so i opened the pair and i think maybe it was you max or maybe something else who said hey uh, it's not in quarkus core anymore and we have quarkiverse but yeah if you're interested in maintaining an extension hey you have it. That's yeah. your repository. That that sounds like me in, in uh, a while ago. <laughs> I can be playing for that. Yes. 
Well, yeah, I think yeah, you're one of the early ones in in uh, Clockwork, I think. Yeah, I I, I like explored uh, the uh, organization uh, a, while, a few days yeah. ago, and I saw there are many, many, many extensions now. It, it grows. Yeah, we have George um, uh, Gasaldi is the the arbiter right now, and uh, what number are we on now? It's like G. Okay, the number has grown a lot since last time I looked. <laughs> yeah, we are literally. On a one a hundred repos now, that's yeah. that's forty more than last time. I was. <laughs> there seem to be a few more appearing each week. Yeah, yeah, and so, that's that's great for us because when we want to do something, we have many many other repos that probably did that before us, and so yes, yeah, and yet, just for for those who might listen here, so the. We, we use Quarkerus as a loose term in some sense, that Quarkerus is like everything that's in Quarkerus. And then there's this thing called the Quarkerus Hub, which is a, or a repo a GitHub organization where we just made it super easy to make an extension and then we take care of all the publishing uh, for, for two reasons. One, the primary one is super easy for anyone to just come and show up. They don't have to, they just have to write the code for the, the integration. Then the publishing is just kind of taken care of. And then in case people, you know, well, people walk away, come back, et cetera, we always sure that we at least uh, the 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 Quarkus team has the ability to pick it up and hand it hand it to someone else if someone, you know, got a bit gets hit by a bus or just, you know, goes off for a year and travel or something. Um, okay. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um but but mainly just to make it easy to publish and uh, yeah and that's that's been picking up uh, quite steadily. Yeah, uh, there's a few things I can show yeah. you if you want about the Guacivers uh, features. Sure. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we 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 can talk take um, uh, those at the end maybe, and then I just want to highlight you don't have to be in Quarkiverse to do a Quark extension. It's just yeah. you make it easy. Uh, like Camel for Camel, the biggest. None Quarkus core bunch is not in Quarkus. It's on the Apache Camel's uh, own GitHub repository. Uh, but for sure, for for any like small, oh, I don't want to call it small. Any library that that uh, where the integration is fairly trivial and except and there's not like a lot of it, this is definitely the, the easiest to get going. Yeah, we we don't have to trouble with like. Applications, Quark, uh, GitHub applications, and everything. Uh, Maven yeah. publications, which is all taken care of. Yes, and sure. that's really great. <laughs> okay, well, all right, anyway, let's get back to the main uh, menu. So, yeah. do, do you want to demo it, or yeah, yeah maybe I can like uh, make a few demos and show you what's in the extension makes it possible uh, for the user to to use. Yeah. So uh, let me share my screen. Yep, that should be good. Do that. Is there a little small, but it's, uh, probably a little, a little small now. Yeah. Good. Uh, the rule is it can never be too big. <laughs> if you've yeah. got like one word a screen. <laughs> this <laughs> one is too big for me. I can't see anything. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's an application I've uh, scaffolded with uh, code.quarkus.io, which I can show you, by the way. Whip. I think it's around there. Yes. So if you just search for me in IO in there, you'll see like there's the Camel, uh, Camel Quarkus Minio extension, which is in the platform and my isn't. So up, oh, if you just uncheck the box, you see it. Uh, okay, so I've already done done it, uh, but yep, you can see, and you have. If you just don't want to scaffold an entire application, you can just copy the pom dependency, and everything is fine. Okay, so that's only what I did, and just I prepared a bit of code. So the extensions. Uh, provides you a Minio client that you can simply inject in your application. 
And this application is simply a REST API, which allows you to uh, uh, store objects in buckets. So uh, it's all. It, and, uh, oh, go, go ahead, Joe. Uh, OK. And so you can uh, store objects and uh, list objects. And well, it's like a, a crude uh, repository, but for Minayo, basically. Okay. And just, does Minio provide, is it just a normal H3 Amazon API or is it its own API? It's uh, a, no, it's like an, an S3 compatible uh, API. So you can have uh, Minio buckets, but they, they, they could be uh, S3 buckets. It's gotcha. compatible. Well, okay. they claim it's like a drop in replacement. Got it. So, uh, I just have to configure uh, my application uh, with a few keys, like what is the URL I, I need to use and what's the access key and secret key to be able to speak to the API. Uh, so so uh, here's my question. I think Holly might know what I'm going to ask you if you say. It. Is there a dev service for MIO? Yeah, or you... you will see that in a second. OK, so this is you're pointing to yeah, I will show uh, you that. You have local. Okay, got it. So, yeah, I have a small script to say, okay, you don't need dev services, but I will show you that uh, in a moment. So, cool. uh, I just started a container that's like running Minayo. And now I can start my application. It will just take a minute. <clears throat> well, less than oh. a minute. Well, it doesn't help you streaming. That always puts a damper on everything. OK, so here you have. So the features, we have like the Minayo client that has been uh, used and some others, OK? Yeah. And I can now go uh, to uh, localhost. Uh, OK, you see we have the Minaya client uh, that's enabled in here. And I have a few uh, HTTP uh, requests I can show you. So the first one is like uh, posting um, a file uh, to that uh, Minaya client, which is actually the project readme. OK, very simple. Uh, OK, it says uh, I have posted in a bucket that's called tests. And this is because uh, I have a default bucket name for test. OK. Uh, and that's really all you have to do. The extension does not have an opinion way to use the Minayo client. It's just it produces one for you, and then you can use it. OK, and I can now uh, list. Uh, what's in that bucket? OK, so I have one file, which is called uh, readme.md. And I can get my file back, of course. So okay. you can see the content of the readme that was uh, generated for me. And of course, uh, if the file does not exist, uh, I will have a 404. Yes, OK, so this file does not exist. So this is uh, the very basic uh, of what did exist when the extension first came alive. Um, and we can also, I can demonstrate that it does work with native. So I just have to start application. And I, I can start a native one. So I, I compiled it earlier because it took a bit sure. of time to compile to native. Thank you. OK, so now it's already compiled. Uh, it started like fast and really fast, I think. Yeah. And uh, we used exactly the same configuration. So we can uh, just try to list the application of the bucket, and it should be is the exact same content. Yes, it is. We still have a readme, and we can also like post our uh, POM file descriptor. 
and it should still work. Yeah, it does. And you have the list of all the files. So the implementation of my resources are really naive, but it's just for the sake of the demo. Um, and so, uh, yes? I was just going to say, independent of the MinIO client, um, I hadn't seen this integrated HTTP um, client in IntelliJ before. It is really cool. Think yeah, that. it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, IntelliJ are like very strong to help you with your development it's, process. It's the, is that in the default IntelliJ? Or is the, uh... I, uh, oh, this is the ultimate uh, version. Okay. But okay. I didn't install any plugins or anything to have it working. So I, I guess maybe it's in the community, but I'm not sure 100 persons. So this was the state of the extension uh, when it first uh, came to the Quarkiverse. Uh, and the extension is now used like, for example, you talked about a Camel extension. Uh, which does use the Minayo extension uh, for the uh, Camel Minayo part of their application. Um, so you can now be confident the extension does work well. Um, but as you asked, we do have dev services. Um, so if I comment everything in here and just restart the application, it still works? Yep, it should work. Magic. Yeah. Very cool. So it's starting. Cool. We show, uh, we, we, we can see here that uh, there's a Docker uh, thing uh, coming up. Uh, we are, in fact, creating a container, a Minaya container. And uh, we are configuring the application uh, for you. And also, uh, if you want to use uh, that container and start another application, you can find in the log how you should uh, start your application and use the same container. So that's like, uh, we use dev services to ease developer. And so we saw, we thought like, if there is a container that's up and we can ease the developer to find which URL he has to find, which port and which yeah. uh, configuration, like, we can print it for him. Fair OK. Enough. And now, uh, if I go to the uh, dev UI and reload it, you can see that there are a few more information on the tile. And are we you, give uh, the are developer. You the... Uh, are you showing dev UI now? Because we're just seeing it Maybe you're not sharing that part of the screen. You, you you can't see my dev UI now? No, just see the ID. Uh, OK, that's weird. Uh, maybe I'll try to like uh, restart the share. Yeah, I'll try restart the share. Sure. But while you're there, just for those who don't know or realize, so dev services is, is a feature in, in Corpus dev mode where if we see uh, for those extensions that support it, like for example, Minio here or Postgres or Kafka, um, if they see there's no confirmation for that extension, they'll say, hey, let's start up a, 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 a Docker container or a process that runs that thing you are connecting to. Minio, Kafka, Postgres, Keycloak, others, I can't think of right now. Um, but it makes it exceptional, like every time I, I, I you forget it's there because it's fairly fast. At least once you pull the Docker image that does it for you. Um, and uh, yeah, and you get used to it because you can just try things out and not have to do any setup, uh, which is always a good thing. Um, OK. Uh, and, and just before I just say one thing is that and it's doesn't, if you don't have Docker, yeah, this feature won't be there. But then you can, of course, just do as always yes. use Docker pose or, or something else. It just yeah, with, yeah, with the container I will, available, we can do it. First. I, I yeah. will show you right right after that. Before starting the services, we check either a Docker up on the host. Like for your information, I'm not using Docker, I'm using Podman, but that yeah, works. Same, same, yeah. yeah, 
So on the tile, uh, we had nothing before, and now we have like a link for the console and the access key and secret key to use. So we can just open them. Um, so I guess it's Minayo access. And I will try to make it big, bigger just after. Sure. So that yeah. key information is only available if you run the dev service, right? Uh, Not in general. No, uh, the console you can you you can have the console if you run uh, a container for yourself. You just have to figure out the port. Um, sure. But we decided to make it available by default when you're using dev services. Yeah. So you can see what's in your buckets. There's many things in there. Just to show you, I will uh, just create a new uh, uh, object in the storage, still using let's uh, HTTP. So let me post you uh, like the readme, and maybe we can post my uh, pom, my descriptor file. Whoops. Yes, great. And if I refresh, yes, we have a bucket that's been created. And in that bucket, we can see my POM file and my readme. Yeah. OK. So I, I can show you. I find it interesting to show uh, how it's done, because it's really easy when you are writing an extension to pop that dev services. It's really like. Uh, awesome. Everything is in, is ready in, in the uh, uh, quarters to help you uh, on that kind of stuff. Uh, so we have uh, Dev Services uh, dedicated processor, um, and we use actually we use a container locator, and so we ask that locator uh, is is. Um, is Minayo already running on the host? If yes, we will just use it. And if not, you can, we can start uh, our own computer. And you can share the uh, dev services between multiple instances uh, too. This is... We actually have uh, Antonio here is saying, to have devs running, did you create a test container module for Minayo? And I assume not, because you no, just show, you just use, you just use look up a container and. Perfect. It's uh, it's uh, a generic container I used. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was much simpler for me. And yeah. as you see, um, we have, uh, I, I can, for example, I can check uh, if the URL has already been set. And if it's been set, you, you won't need uh, dev services to pop a container for you. Uh, yeah. I can also, um, yep. Yeah, I can also ask uh, if Docker is available on the machine that's hosting the development, and that I do that by injecting uh, Docker status build item into that uh, 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 deployment uh, processor, yeah. nice. and I just have to locate uh, the container. That's what's done here. If there's something, then use it, and if not. Well, just don't do anything. And contributing the dev UI is also really simple. Uh, it's done in the deployment part of an extension. I know that's not really huge, but I will show you. So this is HTML that you just saw uh, in the dev UI. And yeah. it has access to uh, the configuration. It has access to many other things. Whoops. Uh, but it's like. It's really easy to just uh, use uh, properties available uh, at runtime in the dev UI. Okay. So just that's to, so just uh, I just have to say this: we in general do not recommend to expose secrets even in dev mode. Um, so it's just a, a warning. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> There's uh, like no other solution to access uh, Minayo. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not saying it's it, that. Just it's a general thing we have is that the, the, the in yeah. the dev UI, we not 
in the early days, we had it enabled by default, uh, even from remote dev, but we turn it off because when you're running in, like, say, inside a community cluster uh, and you, you run demo, you're basically exposing a public endpoint uh, where this would be. Uh, and same with this local host. Yeah, it's on your machine, but if someone knows your machine, uh, they could get to it. Uh, not that this the, the mean, mean key is not a big deal, unless it's a production server you're testing against. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but, depends what's but, in the buckets. Yes, <laughs> of course. So, uh, yeah. so we, uh, we change. But you, but you have you have the config property up there. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's limited to to that one. Yeah. Yes, it's only if the service is enabled. Yeah, so yeah. like you won't have it if that's uh, uh, configuration you you set in the application that properties file. It's only if the service is provided it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So, but I just make sure that people we have to be careful about what we put in there. Yeah. In, don't in don't the, show your yeah. secret to anyone. Yeah. I do agree on that. Yeah. So we added a few things uh, to the extension. Uh, so we we uh, a few things. The first one uh, I wanted very very strongly, and another one I don't use, but people asked for it on the uh, GitHub repository as an issue. So we implemented it. Uh, the first one is uh, that if you uh, do have uh, the micrometer which is too prometheus in your uh, application. And uh, if you just uh, have also the MinIO uh, extension, which is my case, of course. If I run, uh, if I like, I will list the content of the application. I just want to trigger any MinIO uh, Call. If I check at the metrics, whoops, yes, good. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Where is it? Oh, it really started after. Ah, oh, because, yeah, you didn't have them, the metrics uh, from your last request. Got it, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, and now you can see I have the micrometer. And now, yes, you have it. Whoops. We, you have also yeah. metrics uh, from the MinIO clients. OK. Nice. Uh, this nice. part I find very, very nice from the extension is that um, I can provide uh, things only if your runtime wants them so i'm not configuring anything i have no dependencies uh, to the uh, open telemetry uh, prometheus uh, exporter in the extension but if you have that uh, dependency in your application then i will be able to instrument the mina your client for you and once mm -hmm. again i think uh, really easy and really interesting uh, because i've worked for lots of banks and big companies that are uh, doing their frameworks uh, and their frameworks are like configuring everything for you and everything is often too much. Um, so yeah. we do our best to only configure what you need explicitly. And that one I can show you because it's a really easy one. Uh, we have two build steps. Uh, that are providing us yes, uh, HTTP clients uh, for our MinIO uh, clients. And yeah. uh, those steps are run on conditions, which are uh, Boolean producers. So uh, if metrics are not enabled, then I will produce an empty HTTP client, a simple one. And if metrics is enabled, then I will produce an HTTP client, uh, which has uh, metrics uh, augmentation. And this supplier is really easy to code. Um, I'm asking Quarkus Loader, will that class be present at runtime? So this is really, really yeah. easy. There's like, it's one liner. Will this um, be at, present at yeah. runtime? OK, so you have a the class. OK, yeah, the metrics is your class, but 
Just a check. Got it, got it. Yeah. So I don't yeah. need the class as it's a string. Uh, and there will no there will be no class def found uh, at runtime if the uh, extension is not uh, there uh, for live. Yeah. Um, okay. So that, that one is really nice and it's reused. It's heavily used by, uh, I think, the uh, micrometer extension. So yes. if Kafka is there, it will be augmented. Uh, if you have gRPC, it will be augmented, and so on and so on. And where, where do you do the who the does augmentation? Yeah. Yeah. So that that is done at uh, in the runtime part of the extension. So if you want metrics enable, then I will produce a bin uh, that. Uh, as a special uh, OK HTTP metrics event listener, and this one will produce uh, will produce metrics, and that meta registry is the one that Quarkus will set up uh, if uh, the extension is in a, a project using a, Got it. Okay. the extension. Okay, so this is an optional dependency of the runtime. So if you have it. Uh, for your application, then you have it in uh, MinIO, and if you don't, we'll, we, you won't uh, have that uh, huge dependency uh, that you don't want, okay. really. So okay. you, the way you do it is because MinIO is using a OKHP client that allows yeah. you to have a... Ex exactly, a and there's no SPI provider or anything in the MinIO client yeah. for the moment, so I have to use a uh, metric event listener. Sure. But since but since you're the one claiming the client, then you're you're fine. You can do the yeah, yeah. exactly, okay. exactly. Nice. And of course, uh, if you don't want uh, metrics uh, for uh, MinIO, well, you, you can just say uh, uh, produce uh, metrics false, and then. We won't, uh, we won't augment uh, your clients. Okay, so that Excellent. one is, you can control absolutely everything. And the last thing uh, we did, and I think it was uh, the hardest to do, um, was to provide a named client uh, for um, Minayo. So the idea was, what if you want to speak to um, many buckets and you know them, uh, before you start coding, uh, but that's also possible. And so I have to stop my application because we didn't uh, implement live reloads for the Quarkus extension. And this is the next thing we have to do. Uh, but I can now uh, duplicate uh, my, um, my resource. Yeah. I have to change the path, otherwise, it won't work. Yep. And so I will provide a, a specific qualifier, which is Minayo qualifier. Okay. And I say, uh, like for sample also. Okay. Uh, and now for the uh, extension to be aware that you want a client, you have to provide uh, any uh, conf you have to provide a configuration that's available at compile time because we have to provide named bin, uh, which is not uh, uh, possible at uh, runtime if, you, if, if we don't have any information. So for that, you just have to uh, use your application properties. So it's exactly the same uh, that we do for database, for example, and we say enable true. Okay. And so now, if I restart my application, the dev services um, and the extension will know that you have two buckets. And you have, so I have to produce uh, two clients. Uh, the first one, uh, which will be the default. So the default is present uh, even if you don't uh, uh, set anything. But if you want other name clients, you have to specify them there. Okay. Okay, and so, so the other can be any arbitrary name, right? The, the yeah, name. I said other. It just yeah. this this name here has to match the qualifier that I use here. 
So okay. it could be Pubilla. Ah, okay. Okay. okay, so it's just a name used in the Minayo exactly. extension. Minayo so doesn't... Okay, yeah. Good. yeah, so this is a, like a, a named bin, okay? okay if there is no qualifier, the bin is the default one. Got it. Okay, and so... So I, what, you, you use that for... Like, now what? I can post to... Uh, whoops, I will just... Let me change the buckets so we can see. I am not tricking you. Got yeah. Got it. Sure. So now I can post uh, my readme to another Minayo, and I can still post to the default one. Yeah. And we can see in the uh, uh, console. So <clears throat> I, I popped another um, sure. another container. So. Yeah, and I lost the fact that you actually changed code and that you didn't see any slowdown in. It was just happy loader. Nice. Yep. So now we have uh, two buckets. So for Dev Services, I will just uh, uh, configure the application to be able uh, to generate uh, two Minaya clients, but I will not pop two containers. The, uh, every client uh, you have configured in Dev Services will speak uh, to the same uh, container, of course. OK. Could, but, could, uh, could, 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 could you, if you wanted to, have one bucket on one server, another door, or is it all just one? I, one, I assume one what? So could, in your uh, properties, you have the named, uh, the named uh, bucket or uh, yeah. client. Could, could that one talk to another uh, URL? Or I like. Does it have to be able to, yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's uh, supposed to speak to like uh, two completely different buckets. So the yeah, okay. the properties I show you there. Got it. I can like just. Um, whoops. Yeah. So they they basically just any other yeah the, the, yeah got it yeah okay. And Makes and sense. you can you can also disable the default uh, uh, buckets. So you can say, okay, the default one is disabled, but the Very other helpful. one is enabled. So you you Great. can do exactly what you want. So you know, I I think I the, I've been looking for an extension that is like easy to demo and easy to understand, and you basically covered everything in this. I can already see the code extension is fairly simple. Yeah, there is a... like the prototypical good citizen. Uh, <laughs> do, you have a, do, you, do you even have a code start? Uh, no. Oh, to be really honest, I will show you my uh, Minayo repository. Yeah. And uh, well, uh... <laughs> it's, <laughs> code start. it's not done. <laughs> But, hey, at least you've got the good uh, intentions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The issue is present, and we've done these things. So we do have a documentation which is present in the Quarkivus docs, um, yeah. and uh, the name repository changed a bit uh, the configuration. So we have two versions. We have B429. Yeah. Uh, where well, there were dev services, but no named uh, buckets and with its configuration reference. And we have the cool. current one, uh, which also has, whoops, uh, everything you need right. to, Perfect. to do name clients. So we, we intend to have code starters, uh, but it's not done yet. Sure. Any anything else on the roadmap apart from the um, the code start? Well, I do have to migrate to uh, uh, Quarkus three uh, X. Uh, well, to see if there there will be lots of work or not. But I, apart from I, that, I, no. I assume you you might just work 
because if you don't use any Java X, yeah, well, you well, you have Java X inject probably somewhere in the code. Yes, yeah. I do, but I think it will be. I I do have some recorder uh, for the name clients, and so maybe for those points, I will have to do a bit of work. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe the next thing will be to add uh, tracing if you have uh, open telemetry enabled, because if I'm able to produce metrics, uh, I should be able to produce uh, trusses and spans too. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And oh, and nice. then after we'll wait for people to ask for more features. <laughs> of course, very nice. Um, we have a few minutes left. Uh, yeah, I, I will stop uh, sharing. Do, my do you have? Um, you said you have. You want to maybe something show from the quarterverse? Yeah, I can. Uh, so uh, I, I can show you a few things that. Uh, that are really helping uh, developers to uh, write and expose extensions. Yeah. So um, for examples, uh, we have the Quarkus DevOps uh, repository. Whoops. Is it big enough now? Uh, I think yes, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's only Terraform scripts. And, and I can, of course, uh, put a request on them. And that is my extension, Quarkus Minayo. And, and so it's just a description of uh, everything needed uh, to run uh, the Quarkus Minio extension. And for example, if I want to add a, a teammate uh, in for the extension, well, I just have to add his name here. And next uh, next run, it will just give them the rights uh, to uh, use the extension. That's uh, the applications I want to have. So for example, uh, I have uh, looks good to me. That's enabled on the Quarkus Minio extension to have security uh, audits. A uh, few things, the Quarkiverse uh, helps us. Uh, we have, so the Quarkiverse doc. So I show you uh, this uh, documentation, which is uh, available. I will just of the list, I think, if I can do that. Whoops. So maybe you'll be, you'll be able, I will just give you the link. Maybe we can share that with audience. I will do. So this page here, it's like a documentation that's written entirely uh, in the Quarkiverse. Uh, repository, and it's uh, ASCII doctor. It's, it, it uses uh, Anthera. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was already fan of uh, ASCII doctors even before using uh, Quarkiverse. So I was really happy to be able to use it uh, for documentation. And we have a repository uh, in which uh, we have a playbook, and you just have to Oh, we see my uh, my last uh, pull request to add a former version of the documentation. And so you just say, uh, for me, I have to find it. Yep. So I just have to say, uh, please include the Quarkiverse, Quarkus Minio documentation. And I want head yeah. and 2.9.x branch included. And like, nice. you just have to wait something like uh, five minutes, and it's live. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's part of the uh, make it super easy to publish. You don't have to deal with yeah. all the yeah the stuff there. So uh, very nice. Uh, in in the same way, if I like release the extension, I think a few hours later, uh, the the version is taken in account in the code uh, that Quarkus .io. I don't have anything to do for that, uh, which is great too. So each time I release a new version, uh, it's up to date everywhere. And just, I don't have to do anything for that. Cool. I will maybe stop sharing my screen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Padron, that was very good.
That's yeah. like a, almost flawless. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be sharing the video link. <laughs> yeah, that was very yeah, great. <clears throat> so Thanks. anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm out of questions. Holly, do you have anything? No, no. I think all we good? we marched neatly perfect. from beginning to end, covering all the questions. It was perfect. Awesome. Okay, but well, Jerome, uh, very much appreciated, and you know, mm. super thankful for 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 doing that uh, integration, and even. That's one thing, but even better that it's so nice and simple that I like, good to show. And I think I'll, I'll use that as a, hey, see how easy it is. Please do more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think like it's really easy to cut extensions and to share with others. So I think yeah. if and, you and use Corpus and if you have anything, like share it with others and yeah. And then the thing is, I know Antonio is on, on here and he, he's asking about the Caucus 4 and uh, Dev Services. Um, oh, oh, Antonio actually has a question. Let me, let me, let me first finish my thought here. Is the, the um, uh, he's trying to do uh, yeah. uh, the extension for, for Azure, uh, different services. And he, he was struggling some of the documentation we had. Uh, and we have on our to do to improve it. Uh, I think Holly is even uh, trying to to try to get that started. Um, but now I'm just going to send this video. See, hey, Jerome figured it out. Here's how. To <laughs> but uh, no, it's not. It's not. There's a lot of stuff, man. But uh, no, it, it, it's really good. We, um, uh, it's really good. So he, he's actually asking. So he's saying the entire of the instructor direction file for extension is still a bit confusing for me. Could you explain it? Yeah, it was for you me too. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a bit confusing for me too. So once again, I just looked at what the others did, and there's a few extension which are which has uh, uh, which have ex ex excuse me, English is still a bit hard for me. So there are a few extensions which are uh, which have really great uh, documentation, and one is uh, uh, GitLab uh, Git, GitHub Actions. Uh, which has great documentation, and I think Qt, Quarkiverse Qt, also have a, a great documentation. So I just checked how they did and just copy past the structure. So, and I think uh, the what he's probably referring to is that uh, there's this whole root, yeah, root folder and a few other things. So yeah. those are actually not specific to Quarkus. That's just the format and Toro uses for what they call modularized documentation. Um, so if you go look, if you want to learn about what that stuff does, yeah, look at examples or go look in the Antora documentation. Uh, yeah. that's, that is there. And I, I read the Antora documentation, and I kind of get what it is now, but I can't remember. So I do as you. I just go look at others. That works. Let me just copy it. Yeah, I was already a fan of ASCII Doctor, but not Antara. But that that yeah. gave me an idea, like for our for our applications, uh, it's uh, what's great is you have you can have one site generated for multiple versions of your application, yeah. and it will scan other branches, and I think it can scan um, multiple repositories too. Yes. So yeah. maybe we'll do the effort uh, for our own applications. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I can't explain. I can copy past. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a true developer. Uh, yeah, that's how it works. Cool. Anyway, super thanks, Jerome. And, yeah, um, to you. And uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be even on time, so it's perfect. So, perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Jerome. We'll end the stream okay. here and uh, see you guys uh, next week. <laughs>